Hey, you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the north. More specifically, we are in Waterbury, Connecticut. More specifically than that, we are in front of the Marriott here in Waterbury. Um, I'm here to attend an event known as Paracon. This is an event put on by Nesper, the, the paranormal organization created by Ed and Lorraine Warren, possibly the most famous paranormal investigators of all time. Now very often on this channel, I'll call to the viewers to make suggestions on where they would like me to go. And one thing that gets suggested all the time is Ed and Lorraine Warren's Occult Museum. Sadly, I, I still get, to this day, still get requests to visit there. Unfortunately, it has been closed for probably over 15 years at this point, so I didn't think I would ever get to go into the museum, and I did definitely want to check it out. Um, it contains some very famous paranormal objects, including Annabelle the doll, one of the most famous haunted artifacts of all time. But I, I had pretty much given up on, on ever seeing the Occult Museum, but I think I've, I've found the next best thing. Here at Paracon, they actually have brought several items from the Paranormal Museum to be viewed here today. So I'm gonna go in there uh, and, and check it out, see these, uh, these items. Of course, Ed and Lorraine Warren, let me get a little background. Um, probably most famous for the Amityville, uh, the Amityville Haunted House in, uh, and, and I think that's in Long Island, New York. Um, they were the investigators that, that, that were behind that. They also, they based, of course, they based a famous movie on that. Of course, also, they, uh, they were, the, the, the movie The Conjuring was based on one of their true cases. Um, and then, then the Conjuring movies have started a whole movie universe, including a movie about Annabelle the Haunted Doll that we're hopefully going to get to see here. Uh, so yeah, a vast history. Uh, of, of very famous paranormal cases. Ed and Lorraine are both deceased now. Um, the, the organization was taken over by uh, by their son-in-law. So, uh, yeah, very excited to see this. We'll just head in here and, and see what there is to see. So please, follow me. Heading inside Warren's Seekers of Supernatural Paracon is the proper name. All right, let's go ahead and check out the vendor room in here. There's the Attic Junkie Paranormal Supplies of some ghost hunting equipment. What's the coffin pod do? Um, it's kind of static. Traditional rim pod in it. Okay. Um, this is a prototype. We don't have it um, up on the website yet. Okay. We brought it as information. As this line is crazy. Everything. <laughs> and what are the? What's the? Does the Scare Bear do anything? Or? Scare Bear is like a rim pod. Okay. Um, and he's got two functionalities on him. Um, so he's got kind of the traditional sound to it. You can also press this button, and he's got a music sound to it. Okay. Very cool. So yes, different uh, psychics, authors, some planchettes here for uh, Ouija boards or talking boards they're sometimes called. Oh look at that, that's got like a demon in the middle of it. I would be cautious about using that one. Oh look at that, little, little devils, little devils on it. Oh, this one's got a shrunken, shrunken head. These are really cool, actually. Hey, how's oh, it look going? Look at this one has like someone's dissected head. Just a little Classic. Info. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Just a little info. These dark ones right here. Yeah. Those are made out of actual casket wood. These are made out of casket. Those are made out of actual casket wood. These dark ones here. Yeah. I teamed up with the Connecticut Casket Company. These are made out of casket. That's super cool. Gives it that little extra edge. I bet. Oh, there's some items here, yeah. Brown casket wood, graveyard dirt, coffin nails, and black salt. 
Minneapolis. Uh, my wife and I, our house is basically turned into a museum unintentionally. We help people with uh, via exorcists and demonologists and various other people. When they have problems with items, we take them for safekeeping. Okay. This piece here comes from a 1964 Dodge 333 called Golden Eagle. Okay. Golden Eagle was a police car that was responsible for 32 deaths. It was decommissioned, a lot of tragic things have happened with it. Every person that has owned this piece has died tragically. The person I got it from died tragically of cancer. And uh, so I ended up taking a $1 million cancer policy from Aflac and then my wife is just waiting. Oh, wait. <laughs> so you said it's, it's a front, front end grill of a uh, police car called Golden Eagle that killed 32 people and inspired Stephen King, they say, to write a book called Christine. Because it's from Old Orchard Beach, Maine. So that's the, in the, the, the inspiration for Christine? It is said to be. So it, did it kill people while it was still running? Or? It killed people during production. It ki killed people while it was in use as a police vehicle. Then it was decommissioned because it was causing too many problems. And then kids would dare each other to go touch it, and then they would die. Oh, oh my god. Now, one guy, one kid, he went over and touched it. He was dared to go touch it. He went and touched it. He went home, grabbed a knife, murdered his whole family and the dog. Oh my god. He's still currently in prison in Maine for the And you keep this in your house? This is one of the many hundreds of items that are in our house. And we're looking at opening up a dead and breakfast. Oh yeah? That's our hearse out front. I don't know if you saw the hearse out front. Yes. That's our hearse. We'll pick you up in a hearse. Oh, we'll bring you to the den breakfast. Feed you some really creepy food. Talk about all the odd things in our museum and tell spooky stories. And maybe even have a seance if you guys would like. Sounds amazing. Uh, that's what we do. Awesome. So these are all REM pods. So they give off like a they give off or they, they detect electromagnetic energy. Alright, so these are shaped like planchettes. I like that, that skull there, that's pretty cool. This is rechargeable. Rechargeable? So you, you came dressed as, as Annabelle? I did. Have you gotten a chance to see her yet? I have, twice. Was it cool? That's amazing. Excellent. Awesome. I haven't seen her yet. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So this is Gretchen the doll? Yeah, Gretchen. Gretchen. And can you tell me what the story is behind Gretchen? So I got Gretchen off of um, Facebook. Yeah. And it came with Lily. So Lily is a demonic possession spirit. And Gretchen was a spirit named Mary whose daughter owned that doll. Okay, so. She passed away when she was born. So Gretchen is possessed by like a traditional ghost and Lily is possessed by like a demonic yes. demonic force. Yep. So the grandson did some rituals with dolls and he put a demonic spirit in Lily. And do you still have Lily? Yeah, she's at home. You don't bring her you don't bring her out? She stays home? Yeah. Oh that's crazy. Gretchen there. There's the demonic doll right there, her demonic sister. So the East Coast Angels here, what do you do exactly? I'm a Catholic demonologist. I, I work with, with the New England Society for Psychic Research. Okay, so you study demons and that sort of thing? Well, yeah, I, I pretty much work with priests doing exorcisms and helping people that are being affected by the devil. Okay, and what are the, these are crucifixes? Crucifixes I, that I've made, that I've solved. Okay. And I, I make rosaries, and usually I give a crucifix to a client if they don't have one. Okay. All right, so these are replicas of props used in the Conjuring movies? Uh, yes. We have several from each movie. Some are uh, the exact same type of equipment they used. Uh, some are replicas of the files, uh, things like that. Feely Mealy game? <laughs> yep, that was in Annabelle Comes Home. Oh, wow. Yeah. Different old vintage recording devices. Very and cool. Sign made from a seller on Etsy to replicate yeah. the old movies. Warren's consultants of demonology and witchcraft. There's different oils and candles here. There's all ritual. So if I buy it. Wiccan stars there. You will email Say, me and then I will coffin. 
candle there as well. So this is an EPP kit, is emergency paranormal protection kit. What does that have in it? So it has a little jar of Epsom salt. Okay. Sage spray, hand sanitizer, which of course everyone just, needs. Just generally useful. Yeah. Uh, Palo Santo. What's uh, a Palo Santo? It's a uh, it's wood, so you can burn it. Okay. Uh, same idea as uh, burning sage. Okay. Um, and a piece of selenite. What does the selenite do? Selenite's a stone, good for uh, protection and grounding. Awesome. So very, very because, handy. You know, weird stuff's gonna happen. <laughs> Just go go with, with it. it. Sounds good. Yeah. So I'm about to get in line for the museum exhibit now. Um, this collection. This isn't the full collection of the Warren Tab, but I, they apparently they brought a sampling of the Warren's Occult Museum out here for people to see. Um, they would keep, I guess a lot of these are items, cursed items, haunted items, items with bad spirits or bad feelings attached to them that they would take and keep safely. I guess they would use their, uh, their abilities to contain these items. Um, a, lot of, a lot of what the Warrens used to fight demons or bad spirits is based on the Catholic faith. So they would use, um, combine that with, with some of their own methods to seal these items in. And um, of course, actually, and I did want to say though, the, the Warrens Occult Museum, um, I, the reason I think it does not exist from what I put together as, as, a, as an attraction is I think it was built in a, um, in a residential neighborhood, I guess because it was in the Warren's house. And so because of that, they, um, they were, I guess, zoning forced that they weren't allowed to operate a museum out of their house. So it's been closed for a long time. Um, and I'm really excited, some of the items coming out here to, uh, to see. Now, Annabelle the Doll, that is, that is the, the big uh, main event ticket item here. Um, now, Annabelle is a, uh, it's a Raggedy Ann doll that um, I guess a, 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 a nursing student had the doll and felt that it was possessed by a ghost, um, a ghost that identified itself as Annabelle. But um, besides that, they had, they had some strange things happen with the doll. The doll would react violently, lash out, do things that were scary. Um, and so they, they contacted the Warrens to come out and look at the dolls, the, the doll, and uh, the Warrens observed the doll, and they made their ruling, or did their decision, that the doll was not possessed by a ghost, it was possessed by a demon. So Annabelle the doll, actually, you know, we wouldn't even really say haunted, you would say Annabelle the possessed doll, or Annabelle the demonic doll, which is really pretty scary. And so they, they sealed it in, it's just sealed in a box, um, to protect people from her, I guess from her, her, uh, her evil, evil vibe or evil spirits, and there's actually um, a, a recorded uh, case of, of an alleged um, murder by Annabelle while, while she was in the museum. They said that a man on a motorcycle, uh, he came in the museum. He thought it was funny that they had a doll locked in a case. He, he mocked it. He laughed at it. He said this, you know, he thought it was stupid. And, you know, they warned him, you know, please, you know, don't, don't taunt the doll. Don't um, say anything negative to the doll. It could, it, could, it could be bad. And obviously the guy didn't take this serious. And immediately after leaving, uh, wrecked his motorcycle and, and crashed. So um, there's feelings that I guess the understanding is that, that Annabelle can pass on bad events or, or, or bad, bad, I, or I, I struggle with the words, but I guess bad, uh, bad energy, I think a lot, a lot of people, I think that's the word they like to use, is energy. So uh, we won't be mocking Annabelle, we won't be, be saying nasty, mean things to her, or anything that stupid. We're just going to go in there and, uh, and observe her, along with the other items that they brought in. So, go on, let's go. All right, been waiting in line here to see Annabelle. See her there in the placard. So in addition to Annabelle, it's clear there's gonna be a satanic ritual skull in there. All right, getting ready to head into the room of haunted objects here. All right, we got a line here. We'll check out the individual haunted items. For here we have our first haunted object. The pearls of death. It says that these pearls actually, a woman was wearing them and they began strangling her because they were possessed and said that the people nearby had to 
rush in, break the pearls, pull them off her neck in order to save her life. This isn't a haunted object, but I guess it's here to just add some of the ambiance. We have a very spooky witch right there. It says this is a satanic idol found in the woods in Sandy Hook, Connecticut. It's that Ed and Lorraine took this into their home and Lorraine was immediately uh, struck in with a strange illness. It says that uh, it was used in satanic rituals out in the woods. And here she is. That is actually not the real Annabelle the doll. That is pop culture image of Annabelle, but this is actually the, the doll used in the movie um, Annabelle Comes Home. Um, real Annabelle doesn't look like this, but this is, I guess they, they, they made a much creepier version to put in the uh, movie universe, but yeah, look at that. If you want to take a close look, you can see her ghoulish features there. Pretty spooky stuff. This is the Conjuring mirror. Apparently this was the inspiration for the movie The Conjuring. It says that a man in New Jersey was looking into this mirror and it said that he would see sinister monstrosities looking back at him. It's been a little while since I've seen The Conjuring, but uh, ah, it's very, very, very spooky. It's a real life object uh, from the uh, Devil Made Me Do It trial. They recently put out a Devil Made Me Do It Conjuring movie. Um, said that this dinosaur was actually seen walking across the floor. It belonged to a child who was uh, demonically possessed. And later his stepdad would become demonically possessed and actually kill someone. They would actually say that the, the Warrens would actually testify that he killed someone because he was under a demonic influence. But it said that this dinosaur actually walked by itself and they heard something say, a voice, I don't know if it was coming directly from the dinosaur, but I heard a voice say, you're all going to die. Some more uh, spooky ambiance there, the skull with the shaggy hair. Here we have a child's coffin. This is one of the coffins that would display uh, dead children during funerals that you often reuse them and they put a spooky doll in there to, to show how it works. And here she is, the Annabelle, the doll, herself sealed in this protective casing. You can see the tarot card there used to seal her in. It says, warning, positively do not open, I believe is what that says, but it's very large. Very large Raggedy Ann doll, as you can see, very different from the way she was portrayed in the movies. Oh, it's really, really fascinating to finally be able to see this with my own eyes. So yeah, we will say goodbye to Annabelle for now. Leave very positive vibes, nothing hostile. So, so thank you, Annabelle, for letting us film you. Okay, so this is a New England witch doll. As you can see there, it's a, a hanging doll. It says this doll is made in the victim's image, is used to curse them. The cross is made from a familiar object, such as a piece of a chair. A chunk of pork is attached to the doll, and as the pork rots, the victim's body deteriorates. So to be left outside of the victim's bedroom in a window or a bush, that's, that's some sinister stuff right there. And here's the satanic skull. It says that this skull was actually used in real satanic rituals. It says Satanists seek out animals and humans to sacrifice their souls to the devil for personal gain and power. I don't know. I think they mean devil worshippers. I don't think that's an accurate description of what a Satanist does. There's a very old uh, African voodoo doll. Here is a shadow doll. It's interesting, you can see it's got different things. It's got nails sticking out of its shoulder, feathers for hair. It says this is used to curse a person, crafted from animal bones, feathers, and a human tooth. It said a photo of the doll will be taken to the victim, taken with the victim's name written on the back. The spell will be cast over the photo, which would be sealed in the envelope and sent to the victim. It says when the victim opened the envelope and looked, and looked at the photo, the curse was placed. As the shadow doll would come to the victim in their dreams and stop their heart. 
do a whole ritual of taking a photo of the doll and actually can kill someone. There's a lot of, a lot of sinister objects in here. I guess they would uh, keep these safe in the Warren's Occult Museum. And here is Hannah Crana, the Witch of Monroe. So finally met Annabelle the doll. I met Robert the doll. I met Robert the doll several times down in Key West, Florida. Probably the two most famous haunted dolls, Robert the doll in uh, Key West, Florida, and uh, Annabelle here in Connecticut. So definitely, definitely a, a spooky feeling meeting the doll. I didn't, you know, don't get necessarily get like any like like some people say they get pains or, or feelings like that. Don't have anything like that. I've I've, I've not really ever had that reaction to a, a haunted object. Um, but uh, yeah, when you hear the build up, this is a doll that it's been, that three movies made about it. And uh, in the movies, it is, it, it, I actually saw the first movie, believe it, in that movie she's possessed by a demonic cult comes and attacks a family that has a doll and they summon a demon and a demon and the ghost of one of the female cult members named Annabelle take hold of the doll and then the doll tries to to get people to give their soul to Satan. Uh, so that's pretty intense. The, the normal anime, a little quieter than that. Um, but but yeah, the just the legend that is built up behind um, this 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 small doll. Um, I did want to talk a minute about the uh, the dinosaur in there. It's actually a really really strange uh, story. Um, obviously, a dinosaur walking by itself and saying you're all going to die is is pretty creepy to begin with. But um, there's actually a there was actually a trial, a trial where um, so apparently the there was a family they believed the little boy to be possessed, and that is when the the, the thing with the dinosaur happened. Um, they apparently they did several exorcisms on the little boy. He was 11 years old, and um, I think what they said was they felt that after he was exorcised, the demon found its way into his stepfather or mom's boyfriend. I'm not sure. I think it was mom's boyfriend but anyways um he would go on to inexplicably murder his landlord and um yeah ed and lorraine warren would come to court or, and try to make the case that that he was not guilty by reason of demonic possession of course that doesn't really stand up in court the judge refused to let it be an argument so it was uh, never heard um the man ended up going to prison for 10 years and believe it or not he's actually here today he was um he was speaking. I didn't. I don't know what he looks like. I didn't know if I saw him walking around or not. But uh, yeah, he's here. He was doing some speaking. Um, I didn't have a chance to to check out any of the speakers. I'm not. I'm not wasn't very familiar with, with any of them. I'm still uh, still learning with uh, this this paranormal stuff. Um, but thank you. Thank you for visiting. This was a cool experience, and I'm glad you could share it with you guys. Uh, if you want to subscribe to this channel, I'll let you know when new videos are coming out. I've gone check out some of the older videos on this channel. I've been to the 48 continental United States filming roadside attractions, museums, amusement parks, haunted houses, and other fun stuff. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider donating to Patreon. Three dollars or more will get you a postcard once a month from me. And um, all that information is down in the description. All that helps keep this train on the tracks, this boat on the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.